Hello class, today's video is on the topic of reflections. We've been working with um, reflections before when we were reviewing the transformations that you did in middle school. And just to be on the same page, we're just going to review those middle school reflections and then take you to the next level to discuss about high school reflections. So if you have a shape, as we see here, we have a triangle, and I want to reflect this triangle. In order to reflect anything, I need to make sure I have a line of reflection. Now in middle school, the types of line of reflections you use were either the x-axis or the y-axis. So if I want to go ahead and reflect this shape around the, the y-axis, that means I'm basically going to flip this shape over as if this y-axis is the mirror. So let's see what happens when I reflect the shape over. What does happen? Here you have a reflected shape. But what I want to point out is some properties of the reflected shape. Look to see how far away the red dot is from the line of reflection. Since the line of reflection in this case was the y-axis, then the, the red dot is actually two units away from the line of reflection. Since the red dot is two units away from the line of reflection, then its reflected image is also two units away from the line of reflection. Let's see, does that make sense for the green dots? Here's your pre-image dot and here is the image dot. The pre-image dot is one, two, three away from the line of reflection. And look, the green dot, the image one, is three units away from the line of reflection. So what happens is on every reflected image, when you compare the pre-image with the image, you'll notice that the pre-image point distance from the line is the same distance as the image points distance from the line of reflection. That's how you know things are truly reflected. For example, if I were to move this figure up here, this would no longer be a lot of reflected shapes because they're not going to be the same distance from the line of reflection. Well, that one is um, as the other one. So let me move it. Okay. So this is an example of something that is not a lot, not an example of lot of reflected images. Not sorry, not a reflected. Now, in middle school, you mostly dealt with, with reflecting shapes around the X and the Y axis. And the same occurs if I were to reflect a shape across the X axis. As you can see, if I were to compare the distance between the two, the question is, is this really a reflection across the X axis? And the answer to this case would be no. And the reason why it's no is that the distances from the pre-image to the line of reflection is not the same. From this green point is one, but this green, the, the image's reflection is not one, it's actually two. So then over here, the purple point is one away, this purple point is, is two away. So it is not a line of reflection because um, they are not the same distance away from it. So either the line is wrong or the image is not really a reflection across the line. To fix this matter, I can change the line of reflection so that they will all be the same distance away. How can I change it? If I take a look over here and not say the distance from the x-axis, but let me be from this line right down here. The equation of this line is every point on its this line has an x value of negative a half. So the equation for this line is x is equal to, I'm sorry, not x is equal to negative a half. y is equal to negative a half because every y coordinate on this point has a y coordinate of negative one half. And if we look to see the distance between the green point and this line of reflection, it's around one and a half. And if we want to take a look at the distance between this, the pre-image, the images point and the line of reflection, it's one and a half too. So in this case, 
we have here that these points are the reflections of each other because they're the same distance from the line of reflection. Now let's go back to this picture. As you can see here, these are not the reflections of one another. But let's say I were to move this shape over here. Are they still reflections of one another? Well, initially you might say no because they look to be not the same point, the same distance from the y-axis. And you're correct. But what if the y-axis is not the line of reflection? What if there's another line that's the line of reflection? So let's see how we can determine this apart. Let's count the distance between the two red dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it seems like if there really is going to be a line of reflection, it's going to have to be midway between the two red dots. Well, midway is at around three and a half. So let's go and figure out three and a half because half of seven is three and a half. One, two, three and a half. So this is my midpoint between these two red dots. And let's draw a line, a vertical line, that will represent that line of reflection. And this particular line of reflection, the equation for this line is x is equal to negative 1.5. And the reason why I can say negative 1.5 is if I look over here, I go negative 1 and it's between negative 1 and negative 2. So this is the equation of this line. It's still a vertical line, but it's also my line of reflection. How can I check? Let's try another set of points and let's count to see the distance between the two. So over here I have one, two, three, four and a half. The distance between this green point and the line of reflection and one, two, three, four and a half as well. So they are the exact same distance. So therefore this has to be the line of reflection. Okay, let's take a look at another example of reflecting this image. Now, of course, in middle school, you dealt with reflecting lines across the x-axis and the y-axis. And I talked to you about reflecting across lines other than the x and the y-axis, other vertical and other horizontal lines. But there's one more type of line we can also reflect on, and that's also basically any line. And in this case, I'm going to draw this line. And the equation of this line is it has a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 0. So the equation of this line is y equals x. Okay? So if I reflect this figure over this point, where will the new figure be? Well, just like before, we said the same distance the red point is from the line of reflection, its, its reflective point should be the same distance on the other side. So let's try and figure out the distance. And if you remember from last semester, we talked about the distance between a point and the line to be the perpendicular distance between the point and the line. That will tell you the distance. Well, we're not actually as concerned with the distance. We just want to make sure that this exact same point of the reflected one is the same distance across. And as you can see here, this point is. And the same goes for every other shape. The same perpendicular distance from the point to the line, then that should be the same distance that the image point is going to be on the other side of the line. and vice versa. So now I have my red point and I have my green point and now I'm ready to reflect it over. Well the smart board software allows me 
to rotate it so that I can match them up. And as you can see, there are our actual reflected images so that they're the same distance away from each um, from the line of reflection. Now let's take a look at this coordinate. This coordinate right here is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it looks to be close to negative 3, 4. Now let's take a look at the, the other red coordinate over here. Let's see what its coordinates are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, negative 3. The coordinates here look to be 4. Sorry, I have my horrible typing skills. Negative 3. So what do you think is the relationship between the pre-images coordinates and the images coordinates? They look to be switched. And that's exactly what a reflection across the line y equals x does. It flips the x coordinate with the y coordinate. So the way that we note in coordinate notation this reflection is x comma y leads to y comma x. And that is the coordinate notation to represent reflecting a point across the line y equals x. Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about is matrices. And this is a, a way of organizing numbers so that you don't, it's not all over the place. It's really an organized way of representing numbers. And we have here a set of numbers that end up to be the coordinates of the red point, the green point, and the purple point. And we want to represent it in terms of a matrix. Well, the way you represent it in terms of a matrix is the symbols for matrix are these brackets. The row represents the red row, the green row, oops, and the purple row. And the columns represent the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. Oops. Sorry about that. And the Y coordinate. So if I want to make a matrix with these um, coordinates from the RGP triangle, all I have to do is write what are the coordinates for the first row? Well, they're negative 3 and 4. And you separate the coordinates by columns. What are the coordinates for the second row? Negative 4 and 1 because it's the green row. And what are the coordinates for the P row? It's negative 6 and 1. And what you notice is that everything in the first column represents the coordinates the x coordinates and everything in the second column the y column represents the y coordinates